it's exponentially harder for someone to store their money in a different asset or for a different asset to compete. Eventually all the other assets go to zero against Bitcoin because they're not conservative. Hey guys, welcome back to Library of Wealth. MicroStrategy's executive chairman, Michael Saylor, dives into the world of Bitcoin and the digital asset landscape. According to Saylor, Regulators might throw a wrench in the crypto market by potentially shutting down digital securities due to their lack of widespread support. However, because Saylor firmly believes that Bitcoin, as the undisputed king of digital property, offers the ultimate safe haven for institutional investors and is like a fortress of financial security. Saylor puts great emphasis on Bitcoin's unrivaled uniqueness as a global asset. Because Bitcoin can be effortlessly moved around and preserved for extended periods, it makes it an incredibly appealing choice for those seeking to protect and preserve their wealth. He says it's like having a vault of value that you can take with you wherever you go. Saylor is quick to point out that Bitcoin has been outshining every other currency when it comes to hedging against inflation and is a true champion in wealth protection, shielding your hard-earned money from the devaluation of weak currencies. Let's dive into the latest interview with Michael Saylor as he shares his predictions for Bitcoin in the ever-evolving crypto market. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you enjoy the content we do here on this channel. Let's get right into the video. The power of cryptography, right, makes it exponentially more difficult to break the rule or to corrupt the system than to enforce the rule. And, you know, the power of SHA-256 hashing makes it exponentially more expensive uh, to interrupt the network yeah. than, than to engage with the network, you know, the way it was built. And uh, because the protocol is conservative, all analog property can be confiscated, seized, either by violence or by corruption. So the, so analog properties encourage corruption, they encourage violence, either state-sanctioned violence or criminal violence, and they encourage politics and legal manipulation to steal your property or confiscate it one way or the other. And that's been the case for all of human history. So to the extent that you convert property into a digital form, and that digital form can manifest itself on a hardware wallet or a seed phrase plate or in your head, however it's manifested, you now have the ability to destroy the property by destroying the information, which you can't do with analog property. If you own a vault of gold, yeah. In fact, you can't destroy it. So if you owned a building or a company or even a bunch of bonds, you know, to give you a claim on a government, you can't destroy them by destroying the information. Eventually a custodian or a government can reclaim them. So in that sense, the human doesn't really have the power over their own property. They don't have the property right. They have a conditional property right based upon their political standing or their physical strength. Mm -hmm. Bitcoin gives the human being an unconditional property right because the power to, to destroy something is the ownership of the something. It's a line oh, yeah. from Dune, by the way, if you remember oh. Frank Herbert, where they oh, yeah. talk about the spice and they say oh, the yeah. power to destroy the spice is it's power over the spice. In this case, um, the power to destroy the property means you have an unfettered right to the property. The power to transport or convey the property is another right. All these other properties, you don't have the right to convey and you don't have the right, uh, you don't have the power to convey or the power to destroy. So I think Bitcoin is a breakthrough in those two ways. The third way it's a breakthrough is, is it's immortal property. So you can, in theory, accumulate a massive amount of property and find a way to convey it 10,000 years into the future. You can't do that with even pyramid. You can't do it with a building. You can't do it with any stock or bond or piece of land. But, you know, you can entrust the Bitcoin to an AI program, put it in a satellite, maybe time lock it. Yeah. yeah. And it'll still be there. So... I think the, the implication of that is that in a world of digital property, there's, an there's a disincentive to violence and a disincentive to corruption for lots of reasons. 
there's always an incentive to negotiation because you're uh, you know you're negotiating to get some instead of none yeah if you don't know how much someone has that that shifts the balance of power in favor of the property owner yeah if you did know how if i knew you had 100 bitcoin and i had a gun to your head you know we still end up with a you know uh, a game theory that suggests i'll get half but not all because if i pull the trigger i get none yeah 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 so the game and theory so is 50%, if we split it 50 50 yeah you might well give me half or give me a fraction. Yeah. If I'm not using a gun, but I'm just threatening a lawsuit, maybe I'll just take the 10%. Same thing. Now, <laughs> you can shift the balance of power on that because if I have a gun to your head, but you have the ability to to transfer the Bitcoin telepathically or, or you have a little device, a kill switch in your hand, and you can punch the button and transfer it to someone else somewhere time else it. time lock it <laughs> it's like okay can i pull the trigger before you push the black switch in that case maybe i'd only just take 10 percent. yeah so right? so i so i think that there's technology that can be constructed that at this point will shift the balance of power away from the authoritarian with with the physical power and put it in the hands of um of the person with the digital power i don't think um there's any black and white here. I think that an individual could decide to be their own custodian or could engage in multi-sig. A family could decide to be their own custodian or engage in multi-sig. A small company, a big company, a city, a state, a country, they could all make different decisions. And the decision is how will they custody their assets? And the answer is you don't really want the mayor of your city to have all your money no and then leave like <laughs> does the mayor get to keep all the money when they get unelected like would you be more comfortable i mean the point really is no and now do you want to live in a city that doesn't own any bitcoin no well when you actually implement multi-sig with seven guardians that's called a bank a national bank you know and now you'll have this political process of who are the seven guardians you trust yeah and what your jurisdictions are they in which like is uh but you know, families have politics, right? You have a yeah. distributed family and there's five brothers and there's, and the question is which of the five brothers get to control the family money? Saylor remains unwavering in his bullish stance on Bitcoin. He boldly predicts that the imminent crash of the US dollar will set the stage for an unprecedented Bitcoin rally, a spectacle of monumental proportions unlike anything the world has witnessed before. In light of this, Saylor advocates for investing in scarce and profitable assets that are immune to counterparty risks. He observes the surging global demand for a stable digital currency fueled by the growing currency instability faced by nations worldwide. According to Saylor, Bitcoin's enduring value lies in its validation and its ability to underpin an entire asset class. While acknowledging that robust nation states may still cling to their fiat currencies, he anticipates an eventual collapse. In such a landscape, Saylor discourages holding cash, which rapidly loses 20% of its value year over year. Instead, he advises to acquire desirable assets using low-cost funds and hold on to them indefinitely as a means of preserving generational wealth. What do you think about Michael Saylor's outlook for Bitcoin in the digital asset space? Comment down below. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This is Library of Wealth. We'll see you in the next video.